we saw today when the first motorist came down Wallace Avenue as we were putting the, the banners and she's in the middle of Wallace Avenue going with her mouth dropped open, the bus is behind her. She has stopped the bus and she's yelling out the window, who are you people? This is wonderful. And then a little bit later, about three women came down. They probably walked by the garden we had built, then the banners, and then got to the garden plot again. And they're saying, we love the Peace Project. We love what you young people are doing. So it just makes, it brings hope and hope is the game changer. You have to have hope to change poverty, to change racism, to change gun violence. You have to have hope. And so these kind of projects, it's not always about the tasks and the projects. It's about what we're sowing inside of these young people and the idea that you give back to your community. It was a big, a big step, a big accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah, a big accomplishment in our life. And I'm glad that I just got to help the community in some way because there's not much you could do nowadays, but I'm glad I did something to make a change. When someone puts uh, an effort to put peace into a community, a lot of people will feel, feel that, um, that they need to give back as well or that they can do things to give peace to the community as well and it becomes a bigger thing just by doing even smaller little things it becomes a big thing within the community. I mean it's just a really good experience and I would suggest that anyone who you know sees your documentary and hears us and other people talking should try to find something similar so that they can have the same experience of getting to know people that they might never you know, see again and making an impact on the community and the communities of others. When we do the hard work, it's making it easy for the people behind us. And that's the truth. I've been in Wilkinsburg since 1990, so 32 years now. Since 1990, when I arrived, the community has been in a steep economic decline. There were businesses all up and down Penn Avenue, and most of them are boarded up now. Uh, there were still, most of the Protestant congregations were still here. Many, many of them have left. So I came at the time of white flight, when white people started to move out of the neighborhood and take their businesses, their churches, their homes with them. Um, so that started the community deteriorating economically. And on top of that, there are members of my church who can tell me almost the date when crack uh, hit the streets of Wilkinsburg. It was devastating for the families in Wilkinsburg. You have low-income families, a lot of despair and hopelessness, and then you bring this powerful drug, and it just destroyed families and destroyed this community. I moved to Wilkinsburg when I was nine years old, and uh, with the exception of about five years spent in California, I have uh, lived uh, for quite a long while here in Wilkinsburg. I'm currently 71 years old. I can say that when we first moved here, uh, it was considered a quite nice community. Um, there was um, little difficulty apparent, at least to a child with racial uh, relations. As my father was a minister and he was assigned to a church in Wilkinsburg. And at that time, it was one of only two predominantly African-American churches in Wilkinsburg. And um, at about that time, and this was 1960 that we moved there, uh, there started to be steadily increasing uh, the number of black residents. Uh, it was, um, I guess, somewhat alarming to the current population 
at that time. And uh, I think at that time, relationships began to be strained. Some of the issues that we are working on currently are affordable housing and trying to make sure that the gentrification that is just breathing down our necks here in the next community over does not come into Wilkinsburg in a way that pushes low-income folks out of Wilkinsburg. So many of us are working on the right kind of development that makes sure that we don't displace people. So that if we can get the housing situation settled here, businesses then come, the schools are revitalized, families live here. So it's, it's one of many pieces of a multi piece puzzle that needs to happen. So many of us are working on the issue of affordable housing. But underneath there is the issue of racism. And Wilkinsburg in the greater Pittsburgh area is seen as a black community. If you're a white person, do not go there. You will be shot. I can't tell you how many times in 32 years when people find out I pastor in this community, the first question they'll ask is, are you safe? Are you safe there? And I'll say, I'm as safe as I am in your community. One thing that has hurt us very badly is our negative image in the press and in the media. And there have been things that just uh, make us question uh, the, the verity and the, and the friendliness of the media towards us because they have spoken about things here in ways that other communities would not have been spoken. They have come directly here to uh, highlight some negative conditions, but there are so many positives. When I see Pastor Janet focusing on the young people and her desire uh, to help and to, to raise them properly, um, that makes me feel very good and very optimistic about where the community is going regarding its young people. So with the Peace Project and other summer internship programs that the Sanctuary Project has offered, in addition to the Art and Talent Show for Peace, all that artwork on that banner, they were paid, depending on which year, uh, $50 or $75 for. If we don't offer them some money, they will find money somewhere else, and that somewhere else can be the drug trade. There are not many economic opportunities, there are not many jobs for young people here, so we feel very strongly about paying youth to work with us, giving them a stipend, teaching them the basics of you show up not just on time, you show up before time you stay the whole time, you stay flexible. So this is in essence job training that we are doing with them. In addition, we feel very strongly it's, it's a way for young people to invest in their community, a way for them to see that one of the ways we respond to violence is to get out there on the streets and do something. First Peter, we're told to repay evil with a blessing. And that's what I think these work projects are about. It's about repaying evil with a blessing. It is still a strong community. And I think it has a way to go to move towards its ideal. Um, and what I see are people uh, standing up uh, to make that choice uh, to move forward. So there are three parts of Project Peace. The first was public art. So we hired an artist who worked with our young people on a mural that we go on the busiest street of our neighborhood that literally gets 19,000 cars going down it every day. Uh, my name is John Shook. I'm a local Pittsburgh artist uh, working with Brian and Cole from The Sleeping Octopus uh, in Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania. and. Um, Basically this project, um, we learned about it probably a few weeks ago and the mural, which you probably have footage of, um, we had students, a group of students, four uh, students helping with that. The artists, they were a great group. Uh, the, the one night I had projected the image onto the wood 
traced everything out, put all the color, like wrote all the colors out, and it was a long night, so I didn't get in here till 11 the next morning. They were already, yeah, I left here at like five in the morning, came back about 11, and when I came in, they had all the color blocked out, looked really beautiful, um, really good team to work with, you know, offered suggestions, they did it, you know, they were creative and did their own thing which was encouraged, you know, that was, you know what I mean? I don't want to sit there and tell everybody what to do. So it's good when students are like, hey, I'll, you know, how's this, let me do this, and they execute it. So that was the main thing, not to actually like tell them what to do, but to have them incorporate their own thing onto the project. So from what I was told, they really enjoyed themselves and they loved it and they had a great time. So I'm happy for that. <laughs>
uh, Lamonte. He uh, he was getting us motivated and he was making it kind of fun. It was like we were building like walls on the side of the walkways, and it was really cool. What I see, I see, I see growth. That's what I see. I see growth from the kids uh, and the people that was part of the project. You know, the project. This this is just a stepping stone. So you know, we had to take everything a step at a time, and it will get bigger and bigger and it'll expand like a beautiful virus. Either people put virus is bad, but it's not. But it's like a you know beautiful tragic effect. Um, for me personally, it's just another place to a chance to teach kids landscaping. You know, demolition, anything. I'll do anything to help these kids perfect their skills to the next level. You know. I know some of the workers that were working on these houses really couldn't believe that you could actually redeem these homes, but I've seen them do this. It's, it's really quite remarkable to see a home resurrected as a place where people can live again. And the third part of the project was gardening. And so we put in a garden, a Hosanna house. Uh, we did these peace planters is what we call them, made out of colorful bricks in the shape of the peace sign. And that was made uh, at Hosanna House. We put one in in the yard of our Seventh-day Adventist partners because five of the young people came from our Seventh-day Adventist church here in town. This was really good to do to stop the gun violence and just the violence in general. Like, it was cool to do. It was a new experience for all of us. Yeah. Because we never did anything like this before, and we're just glad to help the community. Hi, my name is Makaya. Hello, my name is Irie. Hi, I'm Harmony. Hi, my name is Gianni. Seeing what I've done. Yeah, like, I did this. Like, like I ride day, past and be like, I did this? Like, right. one day I'm going to drive past with my kids and be like, I did this. You know your mom did this. <laughs> I have three reasons for choosing this, right? The first one, who doesn't like money? If we're just being honest here, truly transparent, who doesn't like money, right? Second thing is, along with what he said, the, uh, outside work along with it being in my community, one, I get to do, I love outside work. I, I'm a, what's the actual term for it? Tactile learner. So anything I could put my hands on, I learn better that way. So outside work, I love doing it. Plus I love doing things with my hands. I love breaking stuff, making stuff, more breaking stuff, but you know, making stuff, things of that nature. And what it meant to me, I don't just keep wanting to repeat what he said, but it actually did mean a lot. Uh, actually getting to meet y'all, getting a different experience, um, learning a few new things, because uh, I didn't even know what staining was until yesterday. So there's that. Uh, and being able to have fun on the job. Because my last few jobs were not fun. I mean, granted, we made them fun because it was just me and him. But I love him. But me and him gets boring after a while. So having other people to joke with and you know, have fun with, made the job even more fun, and in turn, made work go way faster. Like, we'd be like, oh, we need this done before lunch. Like, literally how I said yesterday, we had it done at like 11.30 something, and just had time to just sit around. Like, I'm pretty sure nobody else was able to do that. <laughs> like, no, I'm pretty sure nobody else was able to do that. Exactly. Kind of like what I want here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And I've been saying this for a while. 
and only been saying that for a while because the Boys and Girls Club shut down. Like, it wasn't a problem when the Boys and Girls Club was open because that's where kids went to, I don't know, do anything. Like, you just downstairs, you go play pool, you go play Wii, you go play PlayStation, you go upstairs to the gym, you play basketball, you go outside to the field, you play football, there's like a whole computer lab. So, like, it was just a way for people, for kids to just come together and just chill and have fun and not have to worry about nothing. And if you weren't a member, it was literally like a dollar to bring somebody in. Almost everybody has a dollar. Yeah, yeah we, we're not gonna talk about the why. That's Humwood. We, no, that's, no. We're not talking about the why. I'm Three dollars, so I can play some basketball. I ain't never heard that in my life. Um, but due to the fact that that's no longer a thing, and it's now a school, um, somewhere in a community that we don't have to pay for, because the Hosanna House, you gotta pay for it. You gotta have a membership. Don't get me wrong, that's good, but the gym is the size of this room. Like, almost literally. It's the size of this room. Matter of fact, it's the size of the gym in here. Where we eat at, that's how big it is. Because we were little. Everything is huge when we're little. Like, like this room was big when I was little. But it's just like having like some type of rec center or somewhere to go. Because like it don't even got to be just a gym. Like there could be room to the side or somewhere. It could have like after school programs or something. Just to help people out. Because I feel like if kids have somewhere to go, they're less likely to be in the streets and do dumb things. Because when I was going to do something dumb, I call one of my friends. Like, where you at? They'd be like, oh, I'm at the boys game club. Oh, I'm at the park. Yeah, let me not do that dumb thing. Let me go chill with them. And then boom, now I'm not in trouble and I'm having fun and I'm safe because there's people around me. And maturing with the neighborhood literally is a lot harder because there's places I don't go now due to memories. So like there's streets I don't walk down because maybe I was cool with somebody who used to walk down that street all the time, every day, right? I walk down that street, nine times out of 10, a memory of them gonna pop up into my head. I don't want that. I'm not worried about you no more. I'm doing good. So it's just maturing with the community is also maturing within yourself. I'm not kind of, I'm not sure how you follow up on that, but you know. Best, best of luck. <laughs> um, what are some things you want in the community, basically?
And people don't understand how demeaning that is. Ow. You might think it's like lighthearted. Oh, you're so and so's little brother. Oh, you're so and so's son. You're so and so's friend. I had my own name. Like, I understand that's how you've known me. But it would mean a lot more to me if you knew my name. Like, you, you could know my face. You could put anybody's face out. I could walk up to him and be like, oh, that was the supervisor. Like, that's weird. Like, his supervisor has na his name is Bart. His name is Wesley. His name is Jacob. Like, that's more respectful than just, oh, hey. Like, now there's no connection. Say something. I was gonna wait till they're done, but I forget what I was about to say. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, I remember what I was about to say about the uh, uh, the rec center, right? Um, as far as the people that run it, I don't want the old people running it because they don't relate to the younger generation at all, right? And they feel as though old ways should be old ways, and like everything is black and white. And there's no gray area at all. And I don't agree with that, nor do I like it. Because, like we had talked about religions. Like, there's like a vast amount, yet everybody thinks theirs is the right one. Or you're just wrong. And there's no, you can believe in whatever you want. That was not me. <laughs> that is the perfect thing to end on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was not me. I know, I know, I had to, I got you. <laughs> I am a big believer in these mission projects because I have seen them change young people's lives. I've seen college students come here and change their majors when they go back home. All of us are hardwired by God to give and to do positive work. And especially when you do positive work 
in a community like this that knows so much despair and violence and drug use, it is contagious. And we know through COVID how contagious a disease can be. Well, kindness and generosity and hope are also contagious. So these mission projects can, in one week's time, transform a young person's life. I've seen it again and again and again, and it's what keeps me doing this particular kind of work we do here at the Christian Church of Wilkinsburg. Stay in school and follow your dreams. Unless school's not for you, then drop out and start your own business. Start your own business, but I'll do it.